Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Andrea. I am the Knitting PT here on YouTube and on Instagram. I give maker self-care tips and ergonomic uh, tricks. I don't know why I'm trying to rhyme everything. Basically, I put exercises and stretches and posture related information out in real form on Instagram um, for everyone to learn and so that everyone can make without pain. Um, so every episode that I do, I talk about my makes, I talk about uh, yarn I've gotten or yarn related accessories I've gotten, and I also talk about a little wellness tip at the end of every episode. So welcome. If you're new, uh, thank you for checking out my channel and I hope you'll stick around. Um, anything I mention, any yarn, uh, yarn dyers, designers, patterns, makers, anything I talk about will be linked in the description box below as long as links to my Patreon, my Ko-Fi, my Ravelry, my Instagram, and my website. <laughs> uh, so I am filming, I think, a week and a half after my last episode, which is a little bit closer than I usually do. But I got a lot of yarn in the mail recently, and I figured that if I don't talk about it soon, whichever episode is next will be super long. So I figured I'd just jump in here really quick, give you an update on my whips, and show off some yarn I got, um, which you can see is sitting in this basket next to me right now. Um, so first, what I'm wearing, I always forget to do this segment, um, but what I'm wearing, this is the Clotilde Sweater by Knitting for Olive. It is done in Woolberry Fiber Co. in her bulky base. Bulky? No, this is her Erin base. And this is a colorway Dashing, which is one of her collective colorways from 2021. Um, but yeah, I really love it. It's very, um, it's a very fall, winter, very winter colorway, really. Um, but it's great for this pattern. Um, we got a cold front recently here in the tri-state area. So it has been like 20, 30 degrees the past couple days. So I've been all in my sweaters, my thick sweaters again. Um, and honestly, as someone who lived in Texas for seven years, six years, seven years, I don't mind it. Um, I am relishing the cold right now. I'm sure I won't feel like that soon, but for now I am relishing it. I do have one FO to show, and this is my Dear Duomo sweater test knit for Sunny Knits. Um, and this is her first sweater pattern ever and it is a wonderful pattern um, i'm not i decided not to wear it today because uh i wanted to wear it closer to when the pattern releases so you will see me in it in an episode in mid to late april which is when the pattern will probably release um so sanghi knits um this is her first sweater pattern and it is written up so well it is a beautifully fitting sweater i love it um yeah, I was kind of sad to take it off for this video. Um, and I have a feeling I'll be living in it for until the weather warms up and I can't anymore. So here it is. It's got this beautiful folded over collar. And um, the collar is so neat because she teaches you how to do it in a way that she does it where she crochets a she crows your around and you pick up the stitches from there. But it results in this super neat looking collar. I am not very good at picking up stitches. Um, so I think I will be using this technique whenever I have to, whenever I'm knitting something bottom up or whenever I need to pick up stitches for a collar afterwards. Um, it is just, it's so worth the effort. It is so clean and so precise. Like I, I super love it. I'm just going to give you another look at that. Um, it is knit from the bottom up. It's got a drop shoulder. I think I had a pretty, I did a pretty good job picking up my stitches for my shoulders this time for my sleeves. Um, I think I will talk more about this pattern and what I did um, when it's closer to release um, because I did I didn't do any modifications per se but I knit between two sizes um, and I'll talk about kind of why I decided to do that and how I went about that um, when we're closer to pattern release date. Um, the yarn for this is the Wandering Flock in Birthday Ice Cream on their DK base and it is so soft. The colorway knits up so evenly. I only alternate skeins in the lower half here. Um, and I think, honestly, I could have gone away without alternating them. Like, everywhere else, the color is so even. Yeah, but 
I'm really happy with this. This is going to be like a staple in my wardrobe. Um, I don't typically like to knit bottom up sweaters, but I think this is definitely one that I will knit another one of again in the future because it is so wearable. It is such a great basic to have in your knit wardrobe. It goes, you know, with pants, with skirts, anything. I knit a slightly longer length, so you, sh you can also knit it a little bit more cropped if you're going to wear it more with skirts and dresses and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this pattern. When it comes out, definitely go get it and support her. It's wonderfully written. It's such a flattering shape. Um, yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. The other whip I've been working on mostly is my test knit for native knitter. And this is the phases sweater. So yeah, this is the front. So since the last time I filmed, I have gone, finished the yoke, gone down into the body. I've had to make some changes. Um, so this sweater t you calls for five colorways. Um, and so what I did was originally this taupey brown here which is Amanda Hope yarn and the colorway chocolate mousse. It was supposed to be the body with the way the pattern is written. However, I didn't quite like the look of it. It looked just like a little bit too dark, I think. And so instead I subbed in the peach color that I'd use in the color work up here for the body. This colorway is Plank and Stella in her colorway Send Nudes. Um, and then I ran out, I didn't have enough. <laughs> And so right now what I'm doing to is I am using the colorways from Jador Fibers. This is one of a kind rose gold. So this is supposed to be the ribbing, but instead I am just going to knit more of the length to wherever I want the length to be and then do the ribbing. I'm hoping it doesn't look too weird. Uh, so we'll see. I probably won't know how I feel about it until I'm close to knitting the ribbing. Um, which I know is kind of tricky because it could mean I'd have to frog. Um, I already had a frog once because I didn't love the way the other color was turning out with the body. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping it works out because I don't really have any other solution in my head right now um, beyond using one of the darker gray colors, which I don't quite want to do because I do like the overall brighter, more spring look that this has. My other idea was that I could just knit it a little bit shorter so that it's a crop and then just, you know, only wearing with high-waisted pants or dresses. Um, but I really got to think about it and kind of see what it goes with in my wardrobe and see if it would actually be that wearable too. Um, so yeah, that's my dilemma right now. Um, yeah. Uh, the other colorways I'm using are, let's see, the I think the only ones I haven't talked about are, yeah, the gray ones. So the dark gray is um, Twilight Society from um, House of Ala Mode. And the lighter gray that's got some speckles in it, which you can see kind of right here. The lighter gray is Plank and Stella in Pirate's Lost Booty. Um, let me double check the name of the House of Ala mode. Tailored Suit. It's called Tailored Suit. Um, so yeah. So, uh, one other thing I don't think I mentioned last time is that all everything except for the J Jador fibers right here, everything else is fingering weight. So I'm actually holding a double to get gauge. And this is a great way if you've got a lot of single skeins of fingering in your stash that you don't know what to do with now. Um, it's a great way to stash bust. Um, because before I became a sweater knitter in 2020, I was mainly an accessories knitter. So I had a lot, I have a lot of single skeins of yarn and I didn't really quite know what to do with them because it's, um, I don't really have a need for shawls right now. I have a lot of shawls from when I used to only knit shawls and I just haven't been really into sock knitting as much lately. Um, and so I was really happy to stash bust and to hold my fingering weight double to get a more DK gauge. Um, yeah. So yeah, so, uh, I'll let you all know how this turns out. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't look too strange. If anything, if it looks strange, I think maybe what I might do is mimic the striping up here, down here at the body. I don't really know. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> if I hadn't run out my my peach color. So yeah, we'll see. 
Uh, that's what I've been mainly working on. I did cast on the Jones cardigan for my dad's cardigan, uh, but I haven't really gotten much done. Maybe just a couple of rows of ribbing, so not really worth showing. Um, but I've got to get cranky on that, and I've got to cast on my final Monet sweater too. So once I think I finish that test knit, I will cast on for December's uh, Monet sweater, and I'm really excited for that one. Um, yeah, so that's it for kind of what I'm working on. So now to the bulk of the video, which is the yarn I've gotten. So I'm going to preface this by saying that a lot of the orders I got in were pre-orders. Or not all. Yes, pre-orders. <laughs> and one pre-order was huge, which is why it's a lot of yarn. Um, so first, this is the red pansy and this is the georgia o'keefe collection and this is february's colorway and this is based off the painting music pink and blue number two so it is so fun it is so bright and it is the perfect colorway for my daughter it is kind of like everything she kind of loves I really love the pastel -y end right here too. But yeah. So I did get three skeins of this on DK, which should be enough for a sweater for my daughter um, of some sort. So we'll figure out a pattern at some point um, and go with that. Um, but yeah, these are really beautiful. Next, I guess I'll just put these in my lap. Um, I did get some yarn for um, Auro Knits and Pearls D-Stash. And what I got from her D-Stash was from Sunday Fiber Coat. So I've been wanting to try Elisa's yarn for some time. Um, but one of the colorways I was really looking for for quite a while was Cream Tangerine, which she hasn't really had in her shop on a base that I want. Um, and so I was really happy to get these from Auro's D-Stash. So this is Cream Tangerine. It's this beautiful spring colorway. This cream base with some light orange and some grays in there too. And this base is the Barefoot Sock Base, which is a three-ply, 80% organic merino wool, 20% nylon. It's an eco superwash. So yeah. I also, so this was not a pre-order. It was kind of an impulse purchase, but I was for some reason on Shopla Mercery's website and I was looking at their sales section um, and she had some Hello Stella and the bulky base on sale. And so this is Big Stella. It is 80% super wash merino, 20% nylon. It is bulky and she had it on sale for $18 a skein. So how could I pass that up? And this is the colorway plie. Beautiful, delicate, light pink. And my plans for it are to knit um, a bulky cardigan. Um, it's by Tina Say Knits. I can't remember the name of the pattern right now, but it's a bulky weight cardigan and there's a, and the CC is a worsted weight that you use for the kind of accent uh, throughout. Um, yeah, but I'm really excited for that. What is the name of that cardigan? I can't remember, but I will pop it down there because um, I'll look it up after this. So, and then I also got my pre-order from Woolberry. So, where did it go? I think one of my skeins. There's a lot of you on my lap right now. Hang on. Okay. I'm back. So um, I also got my pre-order from Mulberry Fiber Co. And this was their year in review collection where she um, put up some colorways that were favorites from 2021 for purchase. Um, and so first I got a sweater quantity of Snow Kiss Mountain. It's this beautiful kind of, I don't know how to describe it, like a, mm, like a peachy, light peachy color. It's not really peach. I don't really know how to describe it. This is on the worsted base. So I got a sweater quantity. And then I also just got a skein of Above Mirkwood on Berry DK. Look how pretty this is. 
It's a little different from the pictures on your Instagram, and I think that's because the pictures on your Instagram were of it on the fingering base. Um, and, you know, different bases will take dye a little bit differently. But I still love this one, too. Um, I don't really have any plans for it. I think it will probably be a contrast color in a colorwork sweater. Yeah, and then I am just tossing yarn over to the side as they go. From Shop of Mercy, I also decided to finally bite the bullet and try their the Knitting for Olive compatible cashmere base. So as you all know, if you're a longtime viewer, I cannot do alpaca or mohair or surrey because I am kind of allergic and very sensitive to it. Um, and so Ching Fiber has a Veronita base, which is... Seven, what is it, 79% cashmere, 21% silk. And it is so soft, so luxe, but also very expensive and also in the UK, so even more expensive with shipping. So I wanna try a more affordable option. So this is Knitting for Olives, compatible cashmere. This is the colorway Dusty Dove Blue. And it comes in these little 25 gram balls. Um, and each ball is has 187 meters, which right now I cannot remember what that translates to yardage wise, but it's pretty good. Um, yeah, and so this is definitely way more affordable. I can't remember what the price was right now, but it was definitely very affordable. Um, yeah, and so this is 100% cashmere. Very soft. It's such a cute little ball. And so I got it to hold with this. And I have shown you this before. This is Gilead in the Dororum Natura. Dororum Natura? I think so. It is their worsted weight. Um, and it's 100% wool. And this is a colorway Tempet. Gilead. Oh, Gilead is from Dororum Natura. I think that's the, the, brand, the brand name. Yes. <laughs> So Julia is the base. Um, and so this base, as you can see, it's a little bit more um, rustic and wooly than what I usually use. Um, and so my plan is to hold these together and hope the cashmere will soften it up so that it will be much softer for me to wear next to skin. And so we'll see. Um, and I think, yeah, it'll be a really pretty kind of blue, blue marled colored sweater. And then my Explorer Knits pre-order came, and this is the big one. So Explorer Knits, this was her favorites collection, I believe, um, from the end of last year, or the beginning of this year, and I got a lot of yarn. It's probably the biggest yarn order I've ever placed, ever, like at once. Um, yeah, and it was a little overwhelming when it all arrived in the mail. Um, and I don't even have it all here. Um, so first, and I do have plans for all these. So first, um, I really love Allie's tonals. And so I got yarn to make a five color color work sweater. The main color is going to be elderberry, which is this beautiful, deep purple. And then the contrast colors are these four. Maybe if I hold up this way, it'll look a little better. So this is linen, which is this beautiful taupey color. Don't know what is going on my camera here. There we go. Linen. This is to the stars who listen. Nightfall, which is this beautiful dark tealy blue, and Daybreak. Come on. There. So yeah, I think it's going to be a very stunning and richly colored sweater. Can't wait. Um, I also got yarn for another sweater. This is Barrel Age Sour on DK. And this is a colorway that she had in when she did her beer and I think it was beer and wine, beer or beer and coffee uh, club back in, I think it was 2019. It was a while back. 
And I remember seeing this and kind of regretting that I didn't subscribe to the club then. So I'm really glad I got some now. And I got a skein of Moonstone on DK to hold with it. Or to not hold with it, to use as a contrast. I am kind of regretting not getting more Moonstone, which is probably something you've heard a lot from a lot of people. It is really pretty. Um, yeah. And then I also got a sock set, which I know everyone's like, why are you getting a sock set when you don't knit socks? I'm hoping I will knit socks soon one day. I keep meaning to, but then I keep just casting on sweaters because I want to knit sweaters. And so this sock set is Lunar Light with the Stars Who Listen as the little contrast mini. Look how pretty that is. Yeah. All right. So that is all the yarn I got. Um recently, which I know is a lot. And I am trying to be better about my purchasing. Um, just because I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of yarn, <laughs> which I do. Um, I would probably end up doing a D stash at some point whenever I can get around to it just to make my stash feel a little bit more manageable. Um, but I am just really excited about all the beautiful yarn I have and all the projects I have planned and all the inspiration I get. Um, yeah, but I am going to try to be better about purchasing from here on out. Um, hopefully, for the next several months, I will mostly just be showing you club yarn that I get because I am also part of clubs too. So hopefully that will be kind of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I really can't wait to knit up everything that I have. Um, I know it seems a little bit like I might never knit up everything I have, which I know it is getting to a point where... I'm probably getting there, but you never know. And um, yeah, and I will probably do a small de-stash at some point in the future. Um, just because I do still have some single skeins of yarn that I know even though I keep meaning to knit them into socks, they probably will just take so much longer to be knit into socks that I would rather that they be out there for someone else to enjoy in the meantime. So yeah. Um, so the wellness tip for this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about just tension of yarn. <laughs> and what I mean by that is not just kind of how much tension you're holding your yarn with when you're knitting it up, but also the tension of it coming out of your yarn ball or your yarn cake. Um, so let me get something as an example. So one thing that may be causing some tension when you're knitting that you may not be aware of is how much of your yarn is, how your yarn is being pulled out. And so, sorry, everything's got a little tangled here. Okay, so um, if you got like a yarn cake or a yarn ball, depending on how you pull, if you pull from the center or you pull from the outside, well, you do wanna make sure when you're knitting um, is that you have enough slack so that as you're knitting, you're not constantly kind of like feeling like there's a lot of tension on the yarn as it's coming out of the ball or the cake or what have you. Um, you wanna make sure you've got enough slack so that the yarn itself is loose and relaxed as you're knitting it, um, so that you're not constantly feeling like you're yanking it out of the ball as you knit. Um, so that's my little tip for you. Um, sometimes, especially when uh, maybe it's kind of got caught in the middle a little bit here in the knot or if the ball itself is kind of squished in something so it makes it harder for you to pull that yarn out. I like to pull a length of it out and then knit it and once I get to where I'm starting to feel that tension of it being pulled out of the ball again, I will pull some more out. Um, it's just something that I've found to help with adjusting the tension in my fingers. And, you know, this is especially important if you feel like when you knit, you have a lot of kind of finger cramping, hand cramping, especially with the hand that tensions your yarn. So, you know, check that out. See if that might help with some of any issues that you're having. And it's just something to keep in the back of your head, too. Um, there are a lot of factors that go into whatever kind of stress or discomfort you might feel when we're knitting or crocheting. Um, and some of these are things that maybe you don't no could be sources of tension um and that is one that i have found can make a huge difference for me when i'm feeling it so i hope that helps you um so that's it for this week's episode thank you for joining me um i hope you enjoyed seeing all the yarn that i got 
uh, I hope that it will be an open project soon that I can show you. Um, and I will see you guys next time. And hopefully next time I will have more FOs and more things cast on to talk about. Um, but yes, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Um, and happy knitting! <laughs>